everybody, and welcome back to the Star Wars Expanded Universe, narrated by Disney, Orkin Lucasfilm, and Trevor Way Slice It, Legends. The final book, at least by Stackpole, well, technically not, but in the concurrent story of the X-Wing series, book four, Back to War, with this gorgeous art by Michael Stackpole, of course. As always, I don't have too much to say about this one, so this one is probably going to be shorter. Um, the characters have since left the government, which it's fun and it's Star Wars, so I kind of like. I have this thing where, like, depending on the franchise, I take it less seriously. So if it was like Babylon 5, I'd probably be like, mm, I don't know if that works. But since it's Star Wars, I kind of just, okay. Um, though realistically, I don't think that would work. But they go rogue, and they go to stop um, Izard. Another thing I should say is I thought, or I remember saying, that Izard's like one of the best villains, and she's a female. And I think that holds true for the first three books. But she's kind of weak in here, though that might be the point as it seems like she's kind of slipping, but she's super intelligent, super threatening in the first three books, and here she just seems to have lost her edge, but that might be the exact point. Um, that being said, I just didn't find her as fun to read about this time. There's also a couple people that are trying to usur usurp her, and that was fine. All the character interactions, still fun, still great. A lot more dogfights in here, which if you know me, I don't care about action scenes and novels because I'm more of a visual person when it comes to action. So I, of course, skimmed over that, which means that there are large sections of that of this book where I'm just kind of zoning out because I don't care about it. Um, I mean, I'm reading it in case it's something like a death or something, you know, something important like that. But I'm other than that, like I'm not really visualizing the battle. It's just like words on a page that I got to get through. To get to the stuff I care about, which is the character stuff. And the character stuff, again, is phenomenal. As always, this book gets major props, though, for two things in particular. One is a character from Zahn's uh, novels making an appearance in here. And for bringing me one of my favorite side characters of all time, which is Booster Tarek, Myrax's father. And he is so much fun. I love reading about Booster. I love his personality. I love everything about Booster. Booster's great. Booster in the future is going to have a Star Destroyer that he paints entirely red. And it's like a resort. Like a cruise ship. And I freaking love that. I love Booster so much. Best addition to this book is Booster Tarek. Um, a lot of character stuff and development happens here. Um, certain progressions with Myrax and Corrin happen. Um, and, of course, it's happily ever after. And Izard is defeated. But is she killed? We heard her voice. Her ship got destroyed. But is she dead? I don't know. There is a novel after the Thrawn trilogy titled Izard's Revenge. So I guess we'll see what that's all about. I mean, I already know. But for the sake of non-spoiler-wise, I won't get into it. But, yeah. It's a, it's a solid finale. To the, to the novel. I mean, the plot. They do a bunch of guerrilla warfare attacks. They go on the offensive. They attack Izard. Izard's trying to plan around them. But in the end, the rogue squadron is victorious. They also get help from certain characters, you know, without spoilers. That helps fund it. And they also get unofficial help from the New Republic, even though they've annexed themselves from it. Uh, and then, of course, by the end, after they've successfully defeated Izard and, you know, stopped this whole back-to-war thing because, you know, at the end of the last book, Izard took control of the Bacta, which is very important for healing people in the Star Wars universe. Um, and so that's taken care of, and then they just kind of get accepted back into the government, which I don't think it would work like that, but they do because Star Wars. Um, but like I said, it's overall a really good novel. I enjoyed it. I don't know, I think I still enjoy Krytos Trap. Krytos Trap is my favorite 
of the four Stackpole ones. Um, and we'll see with the next three books, written by Aaron Olston, if I prefer the Wraith Squadron novels. But I guess we'll see. I, I, I will say, though, for people who always harp on and on about inequality um, in, you know, today's age, you know, in this book, which came out in 1997, you have Izard, who's still a pretty competent and good villain, and she's a woman. Um, we have plenty of woman characters on the hero side that are, you know, super competent and super smart, but they don't shove it down your throat. Myrax Tarek, she's she's great. Um, and, uh, Ayala, however the fudge you say her name, she's great. So, you know, this idea that strong female characters didn't exist till now is BS. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about some spoilers. If you don't want those... Time for you to go. Uh, but I will say with the finale, just the X-Wing series, or the first four books by Michael Stackpole, are well worth your time. Um, they're solid novels. Um, and I think if you want a story set apart from the main characters, if you want something different, this is the series to start with. In fact, I'd even argue, I mean, I, I say this till the end of time, I think you should start with Trusa Bakora. And just make your way through the timeline if you want a different version of post-episode six stories from canon. You know, if you've seen that and you're like, I didn't really care about that. Or I'm interested in an alternative telling of what could happen after episode six. You know, I say start with Trusa Bakora because, you know, you can easily just follow the books moving forward from there. But this is also a good place to start. If you wanted to start somewhere. I mean, it will mention Bakora, which is why I recommend starting with Trusa Bakora. But this is a good place to start if you've finished episode six. And you're like, what comes next? I, I can think, you know, Trusa Bakora or this, I think, is a wonderful place to start. You could also start with the Thrawn trilogy. But if you want to be unique, this is also an interesting place to begin your adventure. Anyway, spoilers. Don't want them. Bye bye Um, I only have a couple things. Again, Booster Tarek, phenomenal character. The mo he got he gets introduced here, and every appearance he makes in the future is grand. Early on in the book, Tycho goes to Alderaan for like a memorial scene, and that entire section was just really, really well written. Um, and then the Zon character that is in this book that I didn't want to say in non spoilers is Talon Card, which is really great. And then you see the connections that Zahn and Stackpole would make together because they were friends, and so we have all these connections, which is really cool. And like I said, I had barely any notes for this book. By the end of the book, or near the end of the book, um, Booster and Corrin fight, because of course Booster had, did not have a friendly relationship with Corrin's father, so that's like a whole thing. And so it's addressed here, Wedge puts some sense into the both of them. It's a wonderful scene. And the only other important thing I wrote down to mention was that Corin asks Myrax to marry her. And they actually do get married by the end of the book, which is just very sweet. Myrax and Corin, after rereading this, are one of my favorite uh, romances in the EU. Um, I really enjoy them together. So that was really cool. But yeah, back to our... I think this is a solid series. I'm thinking I might like Alston's books more, but we'll see when I reread them. So, yeah, until next time, guys, I've got a couple short stories and then Wraith Squadron by an Aaron Alston. Until then, may the Force be with you.